All right, we're ready to start the macro variable program. Before we start, notice right now that the diameter wear offset's got a negative 70 thou in it from the last time we ran this one. So the first thing that we do is we clear everything back to original in our programs, just to let you know by switching our variables back. But when I go ahead and I press cycle start, here we go. Cycle start, it goes to M98, P200, and it goes and grabs the external subroutine program that goes and grabs the probes. That external subroutine program probes the x-axis first right there, finds the center, the center datum right there, and then it probes the y-axis right there, and it finds the center datum. So we now know that everything's based off the center of that stock at that point. Then we're going to grab that half-inch, three-foot carbide end mill, and trim up the sides real quick. We have a tight side tolerance there, right? So we have to trim up the sides. The soft jaw is actually relieved a little bit lower than where the part sits. And we're able to mill the sides with the periphery of the cutter. Back to the program, the main program. It calls up a G65 P210, which is a drilling program. So now we're G83 drilling. Now we're G70 drilling a full old circle pattern. So notice those variables in there, right? There's no numbers. It's grabbing those variables from the G65 callout, the 1 through 33 local variables. So it uses those A, B, C, I, J, Ks to populate this and drill those five holes. Wow. Didn't even have to have code. Well, we have to have code. Didn't even have to have numbers in our code. We use variables. So at that point, it just finished drilling all five holes. It's now onto the G65 P220 subprogram where it pulls up a G13 pocket milling and it grabs D5 so it grabbed that original diameter that got cleared out notice there's no wear in it at the moment so we have 0.625 diameter right there with no wear it thinks it's a 5 8 inch cutter it's actually not it's a 3564 so I pulled it out of the drawer it's pretty beat up so we'll see how well it cleans up this bore so now it's bringing in the probe, it turned this, the probe on, these are all just handwritten ones, right? And it's going to probe the bolt hole circle pattern first. And if you look, the bolt hole circle pattern is being checked for true position and it's being checked for size tolerance with those variables in there. If you look, we have our H and our M variable right there. So that H and the M variable will be our size and our true position respectively. When it's all done probing the holes, and if it, assuming it doesn't fail or turn on an alarm at this point because it's out of size, it's going to come back and it's going to want to repro or it's going to want to probe the center bore for the first time. Let it finish up this last hole that you see right here, and now we're going to pop back to the center bore. Assuming we pass, we passed. We're down in. Now on this time, notice down here we have no size, so. Variable 188 is our size. Right now it's a NAN because it doesn't know. And it's a 929 that cut that diameter. So that 3564 mm wasn't really a 625. And if we go up now on our offsets, it subtracted 70 thou out of the wear. The thing is, this end mill is pretty beat up. It might have to do this twice because I think it, that's a big cut for it. It's at full depth because this was supposed to be a finished cleanup pass, by the way. So remember because it... it so it cycled different variables for the finish pass. So let's see what it comes up to now. I bet you it might have to cut it one more time. We'll see. That's just a high speed steel dull end mill that we used for this project, for this demo. So it's coming down in. It's going to measure the bore one more time. Notice it skipped over measuring the bolt hole circle pattern because we turned that switch on in our macro program. So it's going to come up. What did it come up with? Ooh, 997.3, so we're, oh, we're like 3 thou out. We're only plus or minus 1 thou, so we've got to come back and recut one more time. Hopefully it does it. It took 3 more thou out of the diameter wear right there. Check that out. So let's see if this does it this time, this last finish pass. All right, let's see. It's going to switch back to the probe. The probe's coming down. Here it comes. Wrap it down. Got to love these VF2 super speeds. Love that rapid. And it's now slowly feeding into the, the hole, protective positioning. And we are measuring the hole. Let's see what we come up with down here. We have a NAN at the moment. 
And we're one inch and four ten thousandths. We're within tolerance. We can sell our part finally. We didn't have to pull it out of the fixture and scrap it. So this is really the step to lights out machining, right? Macro variables. Macro variables are very important. It should be a topic that we should all be introducing our students to, especially engineering students who are dealing with CNC.